everyone I'm about to start on the renovation of the baseboard of the case for my Mercedes Superba and you may recall in a previous video I mentioned that this baseboard is showing signs of cracking in the wood uh, underneath and really I think that needs to be addressed because it will only get worse and I've been looking for a suitable alternative to this um, paper one thing I might do is I might possibly just cut down the a strip either side of where the crack is and fill it in with wood glue and then recover it, um, leaving this on. But then I've decided I've changed my mind um, because I've managed to get a hold of this really nice uh, velvety, it's almost like billiard table green, um, self-adhesive sticky back um, sheeting I don't know what else to call it um, and I think that would look really nice I've used this once before on my Swiss Piccola's base which also had a big crack in it and it looks really really nice so I think I'm going to go ahead and strip all of this paper off that base and redo that um, and I think it'll look really nice what I've done is I've made a template uh, if you notice that on the base there is some holes for the screw fixings for the mountings and I have all the various mounting pieces in this box here um, two of them you can see the rubber feet I mean it's so hard it's like hard plastic um, had broken off it was the only way I could get the feet off you can see that's remnants of it there and you can see the screw holes there so to make sure that they completely align uh, I've made a template sheet uh, with the screw holes, I mean I've already pierced them, you can't see it, maybe close up you can. So that when I do uh, eventually um, fit it, I'll layer that over and fill through and cut the, the circles out with a scalpel. Um, if you have a look at the base, now I didn't know what to do with the base, it's pretty pretty scuffed up and, and scruffy. It's not as bad as some that you see, but again you can see signs of the cracking there. Um, coming through this side's particularly bad because it's all wrinkled and that doesn't look very nice at all and it's a bit loose underneath so I've decided to and it's all bubbly there and scuffed so I think that's going to look pretty rubbish um, and if you notice luckily with the pins I've started to lever them off with a, um, a Stanley blade and I'll be able to pull those out quite neatly and then I can cover that properly and what I've managed to find yesterday in a shop that sells organic fabrics and things is this really nice, stiff, waxed cotton. It's 100% cotton. This is the waxy side, so you can see it's really nice and shiny and strong. And I think that's going to look really nice recovered on the base. So that will be a first for me, recovering the whole base of this in black. But I'm going to go for it. I've decided I'm going to strip take that mounting off there, strip all of this off, fill the cracks in with wood glue and sand it down and then recover it. So I'll show you again, update as I proceed along with that and um, I hope you find that useful and interesting. So let's see how it goes. First things first, check out those um, cracks in the wood and see how bad they are. Thank you. So after about an hour of scraping. Uh, this is where I've got to at the moment. This is part of the baseboard. This is the side that had the green paper on and that wasn't too bad to get off um, because I just dampened it with a spot wet sponge. Um, there's still a bit more gluey bits here that need to come off. So I'll do, I've let it dry out for a bit so I'll have to do a little bit more on that. But I'm thinking of using a sander now to, to rub off any surface bits but it's in not bad condition but I can see the construction now and that explains everything you can see that uh, the center of the board is probably just I don't know pine or something some cheap um, wood but there's harder wood on the outside and again I don't know I can't recognize wood so I don't know which wood it is um, this side this area has come off quite nicely this has been well stuck on and I might try and sand that off with a sander. Um, again, a little bit of damp uh, sponge helped remove a lot of that. And I can see that the reason why there's cracks now, because it's just the joints here. 
and again I might sand that down level I'm not even sure I actually need wood glue in it now come to think of it but I'm, I might fill some of the gaps uh, one thing I did notice I think is on the bottom of here looks like little Mr Woodworm has been wiggling his way through there's some traces there but I can't see anything in there so I think he's left the building but I will fill those in fill that's quite a big crack there and some areas where it's been scuffed up a little bit particularly around this lock area here and a few bits here that are a bit rough so get that all sanded level it off and then the thing that I was pleased to see is that the fabric that was covering the base um, is almost the same thickness and it's it looks like exactly the same texture as the waxed cotton that I've bought so I'm really pleased about replacing that and although it's got this kind of stippled faux leather look um, it really looks to be the same sort of fabric so I'm, I'm happy that I've found something to replace it so that's where I'm at the moment and I'll come back when I've sanded it all down so just quick very quick update I've just used some of this spray adhesive on the um, uh, cloth that I'm going to be using as you can see I've used uh, a chalk marker to mark a template out and uh, so it's going to help me position it it looks all um, dusty but that's because it's got the glue sprayed on it the other piece is outside drying on the balcony it takes about 10 minutes to get tacky uh, and then I have to very very carefully line it up I started to prep some of the edges here um, I haven't prepped it in that corner because I'm going to wait to see how that pans out uh, as I work my way around um, but this is the start of sticking the base on so um, hopefully that will go on nice and evenly so I'll catch up after that's been placed put in place so here we are at the moment I'm doing quite well I've actually glued that side down and this side and I, I'm every 10 minutes I'm working my way around because you have to give 10 minutes for the glue to get tacky so I'm really taking my time on these edges and as you can see I prepped them by I'm gluing and cutting this little uh, tiny slot that fits into there so that when it comes back over it forms a very tidy edge there. Um, I've got a pitch sheet of plastic under here to mask it when I'm spraying and I've, I'm using this cardboard to just make sure I only spray the bits that I need. Previously I'd, I'd put masking tape across all the sides before when I sprayed the centre part um, but it's actually going together really well and, I, and it's best doing it slowly so that, as I said, I can work out how these bits pan out. This bit's going to be a bit tricky because this has got a lip under it. This is where the machine tucks into the top case. So that's why I've left that bit last because that's going to take a little bit of forming to tuck the fabric into that and create a lip and then come back over. Um, which is why I wanted to leave this corner here uh, free so... So I can basically work my way around to it. But it's actually stuck on very, very well. That's, that glue stuff is rock solid. That's got a slight lip there because that's where the catch is going to fit for the lock. So I'm very pleased with how it's going. It's painstaking, um, but it's definitely worth it and it's coming along. So hopefully I'll be able to show you the finished article very soon. Here we go. It's the next day and everything's had a chance to really dry solidly. Um, as you can see, um, the base looks, well, I'm very, very, very pleased with it. It really does look like brand new. And that wax cotton cloth was absolutely the perfect fabric for this project. Um, I managed to put the clip, uh, the lock, I don't know what you call that bit, peg, I don't know. Um, but that's gone back in. You can see the slight indentations where I felt for the holes for the, the feet to go back on. Um, here's the felt side. I'm very, very pleased with how that's turned out. Um, I know that actually it looks, it's highlighted more, I think, with the camera that you can see the the seams of the um, cloth that was folded over. And I did make a decision to go a little bit wider um, with it by about possibly half an inch or a couple of centimetres. Um, and I don't mind that. I it's It's solid. It, it's got a nice finish to it, a very nice clean finish. And when the machine is actually on top of it, you don't really notice it so much. And it's not about that cosmetics. It's more about a clean, solid base. Um, 
maybe on reflection when I folded this one over I I, I actually trimmed each corner like, like that but on this one it had this little extra piece but it doesn't really, it doesn't really notice that much and I'm not worried about that um, the next step really is to fix put the fixings back on um, they need cleaning up I thought about respraying them maybe I don't know I might do that or I might polish them up a little bit they look a bit well, there's some rust on that. I'm definitely going to have to clean those up. Maybe a light spray of something cosmetically to tidy it up. We'll see. Uh, but the main thing is going to be these feet. Working out some kind of solution for that. Uh, with what I can find, what I can utilise here at the moment. Or possibly look at getting somebody to 3D print them. If they do print them in plastic, then I definitely would have to stick a piece of rubber or something on the bottom. Um, but... Yeah, I'm not going to rush into anything. I'm going to have a think about how I'd like to do that. And in the meantime, tidy up, you know, these fixings that go on this side. I think it sort of goes something like that. Um, but I definitely want those to look a bit cleaner. Because, you know, I've gone this far in, in tidying up the case and that would spoil it a little bit if I put them on like that. Well, I would never put them on like that. They're definitely going to have to get cleaned up. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so this is where we are at the moment. I think I might sum up the video here. Um, when I finally get those fixings sorted and it's all fitted, I'll do a kind of short review of the case project and um, with the machine actually fitted on it. But as far as refurbishing the baseboard, I think that's the end of this video now. And I hope, I hope you think it's a good job. I'm satisfied with it. It's tidy. Uh, it does what uh, it needs to do, and, and I'm so chuffed finding that paper, that cloth. It really does make a difference. It's lovely, and, and because it's waxy, you can't see it close up. Um, I think that's quite hard wearing and uh, tough. So, thanks for that, and thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. Okay, so at my last update, I had just recovered the base and put on the new fabric along the bottom. And you can see I've now been forming the um, areas where I need to use the scalpel to cut into those. But what I wanted to show you now is my resolution for, my solution for the feet. Um, I wanted to put the original feet back on, but unfortunately in, in trying to take them off, uh, the feet consisted of the rubber feet had turned into this, obviously brittle almost plastic um uh, condition uh, which was oh yeah, i couldn't resolve that i mean i could try and super glue it back together but it was just horrible and they're, they're not in very nice condition anyway and my musings were i was thinking about trying to get it 3d printed and i did look into that and was quoted i think per piece approximately 10 euros per hour and they said it could take anything from an hour to a couple of a couple of hours or so. And really that price was way out of my uh, consideration. I didn't want to spend that much on a machine that was gifted to me. And I, I don't mean to be stingy because this fabric um, was quite expensive. But it, I just thought there had to be a better solution to that. And this is my solution. Um, what I did was I hunted around Vienna, went to various hardware stores... And finally, finally found three sets of um, rubber. These, they may not look here, but they are actual rubber um, washers. Unbelievably, these three together in width, in sorry, diameter and thickness together form the exact height of the original. Basically, two of these feet I'd wrecked and, and two are serviceable. Um, so the exact depth... And unbelievably, the diameter of this one piece here, again, matched that perfectly. I think I can try and show you here. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Oops. Yeah. And even for the depth. Incredible. The centre diameters, though, however, um, this one, the original is 6mm and that's 5mm. So all I had to do was... You know, I knew I would have to increase the size of this by a millimetre. Sorry, this is five. Uh, yes, this is five and the original is six. Yeah. 
Um, so I had to think, oh, I have to drill it or do something to it. Now, the complicated thing on the original is, and I don't, hopefully you can see it on this one, is that there is a washer inside. In fact, this is the original, I beg your pardon. This is the original with a washer inside. And if you look at the original, it looks like it's all one piece. I mean, I believe that when this was manufactured, um, they probably did the same thing I'm doing, which was it was fitted in and then this section may have been glued in or cut in. I don't know. But that was always going to be the problem. However, so sorry again, that's the original. Compare it to the depth of the others just so that you can see that they're all the right dimensions so my solution to that was with three of these and weirdly even though they all look the same actually there was a slight variance you can see it there in the diameters of some of them um, and it was it worked out perfectly because when I took out the original washers it one of them would just sit in there without falling all the way through uh, they're very close to dropping right out. And because you can create that little layer, what I did was I glued two um, pieces together with super glue, um, put the washer in and then put this on top and then obviously used a very tight clamp to clamp it together. And I think if you see from the one that I've filled here, you know, you cut, there's no gap or anything. It was really compressed down. And what I did was... I've sanded it a little bit just to get it, um, just to try and eliminate some of the join lines, but that doesn't really matter. Just to give it that roughed up, you can feel the rub rubberiness of it. Um, the other thing is you can notice that on this foot, it's slightly chamfered. There's an angle to it. Um, and I haven't tried to replicate that because, you know, without putting it on something, I can spin around and get the right angle. But all I've done is just gently... Um, uh, use some sandpaper to roughly form it but it doesn't impact the 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 way that it sits on the board so I haven't focused on doing that but you can see I've fitted two already and I think I've got original one at the front and I should put the other original one here and the two new ones at the back um, when they're fitted in and I'm really super happy because first of all they're not brittle anymore when I come to replace them and the other awesome thing was that, uh, and if I show you, the original screws, so the fittings will go like this. So this will go through there, and this is on the green side. And that bit, you can see it's countersunk, uh, the board's countersunk to accommodate that. And the original screw, machine screw, is this tiny little one. And two of them, well, one and a half, one of them got really mangled up trying to undo it. The head got a bit wrecked because it was so tight. It's not a very long uh, screw at all. Um, so, of course, I had to find replacements for those. And unbelievably, yay, I went to a modelling shop and I found almost, well, this, I think the new one's fractionally longer. Um, but it, I don't think it, I've already wound them in, it doesn't make any difference. And what I particularly like, and I have, I'm going to replace all four and keep these as spare, the kind of two and a half that weren't so mangled up. But what I like about them is that they've got a kind of hex nut in the middle. Uh, so I can just use like a tiny Allen key to undo it in the future. And so I bring it up to date a little bit. And of course, all of these fit in the depth, which is what you needed with the three screws there, the, the three washers there. And you can see they sit really snugly. I've managed to test and fit all, all the parts together. And it fits and it will come together really nicely. So I'm super happy that I've got really nice black screws. Um, that will match that really nicely. With a decent head though. If I take them off in future it's not going to get caught on anything. So I hope you like that fix. My next step now is to refit all of these. Flip the board over. And I've just gently sanded these down a little bit by hand with some sandpaper there was little bits of mild rust and a few spots um, but they came up pretty good and i think they're ready to go back in uh, so this case is very very nearly finished again i'll come back when it is done again you can see i've just used a scalpel blade and these tweezers to cut through the 
uh, the little recess here, the countersunk section. And you can see that fits in very nice and snugly. And hopefully I won't need the little template that I made to locate the screw holes down here. Uh, that should They should find them quite easily, I hope. Yep, so it's all going along quite nicely at the moment. So that's the first one refitted. But what I've noticed is that the some of the tiny little screws are a little bit rusty on the inside. So my idea for that, you can see, just see, they're just a little bit rusty on the inside, is just to punch a hole in the this riffle hole, this kind of sandpaper foam fine sandpaper that I've got and I'm just basically screwing it in uh, to there and whilst I'm screwing it in it's sanding off the rust from the underside otherwise it's it's quite a tricky little thing they're tiny little screws and uh, yeah a little bit I can't even focus on it um, I've got a bunch of them up here and some of them are better than others you see that one there is quite rusty and I don't want to put it back on rusty so but uh, this little trick seems to be working quite well at the moment, so I'll persevere and get all four unrusted little screws back on so we don't have problems in the future. Here we are, it's finally finished the baseboard. I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out. All those uh, fixings went on nicely, as I'd hoped. On the back, they've all got these uh, little bolts on instead of screws. And it's got a nice rubbery feel to it pretty stable and sturdy on the table without the machine but now I'm going to mount the machine and slide it uh, the f I guess the feet into these slots I've just got to locate them on the machine I think that's about right and then literally push really hard backwards there we go so now we've got a final base for this machine sitting back on it again it's really really stable it's not moving I don't think I would need anything to stabilise it if I was typing on it. And I hope you agree. I think that's a deserving finish to that lovely machine. Um, I've still got to reline or possibly consider relining the inner case. But that's the, that's the baseboard completely finished now. And I'm really, really chuffed that I found this oiled um, cotton. Waxed, one oiled waxed cotton. But fit so perfectly with the original and uh, yeah I hope you um, enjoyed watching the restoration of that baseboard from a worm eaten uh, slightly split piece of wood to a really nice finish and I really like this felt sticky back it sticks on really solidly I think it's a really nice colour and in keeping with um, the machine rather than the paper I had before uh, on reflection, I probably would have cut the black a little bit closer to the edge uh, if I was to do it again. But I don't think you really notice the edge of the seams of the black so much. And I I really don't mind that because the main thing is it's stable, it's functional, it's clean and tidy. And this beautiful machine definitely deserved that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.